Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily with Ray Flowers, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to use the promo code FSD20 for a 20% discount on the products over at FantasyGuru.com. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. We got a hot one on this Monday, April 15th. Happy Tax Day. Yeah, I don't know why people say that. We know it's not happy. Send that money into the government. You don't want to get a late bill and have to pay even more. Also remember, the game between the Cleveland Guardians and the Boston Red Sox is starting in about nine minutes. So if you're watching this live, make sure your lineups are set for that game. It's Patriots Day and all that, so we get this extremely early game. Make sure you set your lineup, especially if you're in a league where you set your lineup once a week, and once game one starts, you're locked. Hopefully none of your providers do that. Hopefully they allow you the opportunity to you know, still set the other uh, players in your lineup until their, their teams actually start. I think most providers do that now, but there might still be some archaic systems that don't. Uh, so make sure you get those lineups set. Um, I'll vamp a little bit here at the start of the show just in case you need to be doing two things at once. Uh, we'll actually give an update of a live game here on a show, Fantasy Sports Daily, that starts at 11 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday. We'll give a live update. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Who did? here on a Monday. I just touched my glasses and you know how that goes. Do you ever get that with your glasses where you put your finger on your glasses and you get that little schmutz and it bothers you? Like some people, like my gal, she can just blast through it. She doesn't care at all. Me, it like bothers me. So I guess everyone's different. Do you, does it bother you? Let me know in the chat room um, here at the, uh, while we're doing the show in the morning, you can also let me know over in discord at fantasyguru.com. Again, I'm Ray Flowers of FantasyGuru.com. Lots going on this week. Lots to discuss here on the show. Let's toss up what we're doing today. Here it is. Uh, happy Tax Day, like I said. I get those lineups set today uh, if that, for that early game in Boston. We got a new format with the Weekly Planner, uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit, make sure everyone's kind of locked into what we're doing now. Uh, we've got a bunch of injuries to talk about. Cody Bradford, Bobby Miller, Salvador Perez, J.D. Martinez, Keeper Ruiz, Rafael Devers, who is back in the lineup today, the only one of these guys that got really good news. Uh, he's back in the lineup for the Red Sox today, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some performance woes, and there's a lot of them. I uh, thought we'd highlight some of the bigger names, though, in the game uh, that include Jackson Holiday, Blake Snell. Look at those guys. What the hell is going on there? What about on the positive side of things? Seth Lugo is pitching today, but Seth Lugo, uh, Jose Barrios, Jerkson Profar, Tommy Pham? Yeah, maybe Tommy Pham is someone we should talk about. Uh, we'll also go over the fab for Tout Wars, Labor, and the FSGA. I uh, put that out there last week on Monday. People said they liked it, so we'll do some of that review today. Uh, lots of action this weekend in those three leagues, so we'll talk about that. Uh, and then don't forget to use that promo code FSD20 to sign up for the products over at fantasyguru.com. Type in Fantasy Sports Daily to your local podcast network, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can check us out there. You can also find all the shows over at fantasyguru.com. Just click that Elite Plus tab at the top. And obviously on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Elite Plus Network. Uh, and then you can also see there, we've got a great new package available. And it is pretty spectacular. Buy the MLB product, either the wagering or the DFS. Get either one of those and we'll give you all the other sports but football for free. How about that? You get NBL, you get NBA, excuse me, NHL, PGA, MMA, soccer, and racing. You get the all-in package for free, which includes DFS and wagering for all those. If you buy the MLB wagering or the MLB DFS, so buy the major league package and get all that stuff for free. How about that for a cherry on top of that Sunday, as the kids like to say? Also, want to let everyone know. Um, that today I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in on the fantasy dugout on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. So if you don't get enough Ray Flowers, uh, I'll be on from 11 to uh, 12 Pacific time, which is 2 to 3 Eastern Standard Time for that one hour on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, talking fantasy baseball. If you want to give me a call, you can call. We'll be on there uh, talking an hour of baseball, much like this show. We'll be doing it over on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. And then, of course, tonight it's time to talk to Justin Fensterman, my buddy. Uh, you, you see her on the show all the time. Elite Sports Game Time, Monday through Thursday at 8 to 10 Eastern tonight as well. So um, a lot of talking for Ray Flowers. Let's get right to it and say some things that you care about other than me blathering on about uh, deals we have. Sound like a plan? Okay, let's do it. Okay, um, the Weekly Planner is a new format. I hope you saw that over at FantasyGuru.com. And the real reason I wanted to talk about it is it's in red and it's all there and everything. But I just wanted to make sure everyone was clear that when you get to the probable pitcher grid, there's a JPEG, a picture, um, 
of a, of a you know a, a graph from an Excel sheet, and it's kind of small and it's very hard to read unless you have good eyesight or you're wearing glasses. Actually, put your cursor on it and click on it. That explains it to the entire page. So all of a sudden, that little thing that's really hard to read, just click on it with your cursor and boom, it takes up the whole page. Uh, that is, you know, all the the guys in blue are the two start pitchers. And they're, we're off and running. Now, there's been a lot of talk about two-start pitchers and people want to have this information. And it's very important information to have if it actually comes to fruition. And I say that because while I was writing, I was literally writing the article and it was about, I was posting it. I was in the back end, you know, formatting and all that. And then we get the news that Justin Verlander is likely to return on Friday. All right. So let's put that in the article. Then we get the news two minutes later that Cody Bradford is going to be out with a shoulder issue. So now we got to change the, it's a never ending battle. OK, I really hope that everyone has the ability to change their lineups on a daily basis because people are injured all the time. Like all the time. I can't even and I, I comment on this on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, X, Instagram threads at the Ray Flowers at the Ray Flowers. And I put it out there. I can't write an article. The last three articles I've written. Literally, before I was able to post them, there was a picture injury that changed what I was writing. It's bad out there, folks. I know it's bad to put teams together. It's bad to create content. So we've got the weekly planner, you know, it's it's up there for people to look at. It does not mean that if you have a guy that's slated for two starts, he's going to make two starts. It doesn't mean if a guy's slated for this matchup or that matchup, he's going to fill that matchup, be because of injury, be because of skip days, they go to a bullpen game. But we do have that information available for you. I will say this, too, that looking at the schedule this week, it's a very strange week. Uh, there's only four teams that have all games at home or all games on the road. So everyone's doing mix and matching. And there's every team is playing six or seven games, which is also strange. Um, every once in a while, we get an eight. We certainly get some fives. Everyone's playing six or seven, and only four teams are all home or all road. So the the schedule and that that information is also in the weekly planner at fantasyguru.com. Schedule plays very evenly this week, so there's not as much concern about oh my gosh, this guy is a great home hitter, but he sucks on the road, or vice versa, this guy can't pitch on the road, but he pitches well at home. There's not as much concern, of course, with pitching, it's a little different, <laughs> but there's not as much concern with the, the home road stuff. And there's not that much concern with, do I play this guy this week or not? Because this other guy is going to be getting, you know, eight more plate appearances, or this reliever has got a chance to pitch in two more games. Very even schedule this week. So uh, hopefully you like that new format over at fantasyguru.com. It's pretty clean. I like the way it turned out. I, I talked to the tech folks and had them help me figure out how to do that. Uh, and so that's now available for everyone to rock and roll. Let's start with some injuries. And I mentioned Cody Bradford. And I think we, we, we need to do a reset here with Cody Bradford. Cody Bradford, depending upon the, the scouting service you look at, is basically on the 2080 scale of 40 to 45 which means he's a fringe player at the big league level. Now, he's pitched great. Not discounting what he has done. He's pitched great. But this guy's a touch and feel lefty that has just been in a nice groove. And way too many people in the fantasy space have blown past every scouting report that's ever been written about this kid and convinced themselves that he's a star. Okay? Guys can and do blow past scouting reports. Guys can and do fail scouting reports like this this game is not 100 either way of course but there's just been way too much excitement over cody bradford as i pointed out over and over again My, michael lorenzen's back this week we've got you know there's a potential that the month of may sees max scherzer there's a potential that in july or maybe august we see jacob de grom like the, the rangers excuse me have guys coming back here and not minor guys right so you know, beyond what is Bradford going to throw and how effective is Bradford going to be, there's always been this potential of him losing a rotation spot. Well, now he's got a shoulder issue. It doesn't sound serious, uh, but Michael Lorenzen is back and will basically take his slot in the rotation. We'll see with Bradford. Uh, I had a question in Discord over at fantasygewithos.com this morning saying someone was going to make a ma make a trade for Bradford. They saw the shoulder news. What do I think? And it's, I'm not just saying it. Bradford's pitching over his head, period. Just it's happening. He's pitching over his head. Um, and I think he's way more Wade Miley than someone that people think they can just roll out there 30 times. Well, we're not going to get the chance to roll him out there 30 times because of the issue with his shoulder. Do again, doesn't sound serious, um, but he's going to miss some time. And then we start worrying about guys returning to the rotation. So be cautious with Bradford. I don't want to say an injury is a good thing because it never is. 
But I think the timing of it is good to help people maybe save themselves from themselves, thinking they've got this guy and we don't have to make any more moves on the pitching, going out to make a trade to get this guy. I just don't see that as a winning move long term. Remember, it's a very long season. We're three weeks into a 26-week season. It's a long season. Now, Bobby Miller's got a shoulder issue. You know, I say that with Cody Bradford with his back. Was it his back? Or was it his – let me look that up. That didn't sound right. I said shoulder. And for some reason, I'm thinking it was his back. Cody Bradford. Let me just clarify that so I can make sure I've got it. Right. It was his back. Okay, so I mislabeled the, the sheet. So it's Cody Bradford's back. All the information they said about them not believing it was serious or anything. Still the same storyline, but it was his back and not his shoulder, which I'd been saying. Now, Bobby Miller's shoulder is the issue with, with the Dodgers hurler. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, we've talked about this a lot. The Dodgers don't let their guys throw 180 innings. They don't let their guys make 30 starts. We've already seen them, you know, push back the rotation. They did that uh, to throw a bullpen day to give everyone more rest in the second week of the season. So, you know, was Bobby Miller ever going to throw 180 innings this year? No. But hearing he's got a shoulder issue in April is concerning. Now, the reports are that he's not going to do anything for five to seven days, and then he's going to start to throw again. Um, Miller said he doesn't think it's serious. The team is putting out there that it's not even that serious. Um, maybe he's back in you know 15 days. Maybe this happens. Uh, it sounds like it's a possibility at this point in time. At the same time, the Dodgers do have tons of pitching. The Dodgers do fully expect to push for 100 victories this year. And would they rush him back to make an extra start? Absolutely not. So even if he's ready after 15 days, it might be 20 days. They might just wait another week kind of thing. So, you know, again, not supposed to be a big deal. Doesn't help anybody that has Miller on their team. And my hand is up uh, because he's going to miss time on the injured list. At least the good news is that he's okay structurally. We'll see if that's, you know, we, we'll see. Guys are always okay until they're not, right? We had Edward Rodriguez who was making progress with his arm, and then all of a sudden he wasn't, and they shut him down. So, Bobby Miller's expected back in a couple of weeks. It's reasonable to suggest right at the end of April, right at the start of May. We'll have to see, you know, how that actually plays out. Um, by the way, if you want to leave a comment here, you can put that in the, the, the chat, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. And uh, I'll get to it here at the end of the, the broadcast here. So not bad news with Bobby Miller. Certainly not good news, but at least it's not catastrophic news, I guess. Let's talk a little bit about the offensive side of things and some veterans here. Salvador Perez has got a growing issue. Uh, as of right now, I have not seen that he has been removed uh, from, or, or excuse me, I've not seen that he's been placed on the injured list. As of now, he he was removed from the game yesterday. This is obviously terrible timing because Salvador Perez has been absolutely a monster. Four home runs, fifteen RBIs, batting three thirty nine in sixteen games. He this is as you know this is as well as he can swing the bat. So the timing of it's terrible. Uh, also, it, it sucks at the court at the quarterback position. Sucks at the catcher position. Here we go with the early Monday talking problems, right? It, it sucks at the catcher position because you have a difference maker in Salvador Perez, right? And he's making a difference. And now he gets hurt. They can put him at the DH. Uh, in fact, that's what he does. Uh, he's only been there once this year, but they could certainly slot him in at the DH spot a little bit more. And I'm sure they'll do that if his groin is, you know, one is growing hip. They, I guess they're saying hip too, I, you know. Kind of in that same space, I guess, though. Isn't one on the inside and one on the outside? I don't know. Not good to hear both. Um, they could try him at the DH and, you know, keep his bat in the lineup that way a little bit if they're not, you know, sure he's physically able to handle the rigors of catching for a while. We'll see. It's a long season. Um, they obviously started out pretty well here at the Royals. Lots of good vibes. You know, Perez is one of the few catcher-eligible players that plays a lot of games. He's routinely played 130 games in his career. I played 140 games last year. Um, you know, 2080 is basically who he is on pace to obviously get there again. Bad timing with the injury. Uh, we'll see if it becomes something that requires an IL stint. I can't rule it out at this point, uh, but we have not seen that information come across the waiver wire yet. Uh, we did just get information here um, minutes ago as I was looking at news to see if there's anything about Salvador Perez. Oh boy, Jake Berger has got an oblique issue we knew about. He's going to the injured list. Um, here we go. And he is saying, according to a report by Craig Mish, let me verify that. Pull up Craig Mish, uh, his report. Um, yeah, okay. He, okay, he's not saying this according to Craig Mish. I'll have to look up. It's being reported by Roto World that he said, Berger, that the injury feels similar to the one he had with the White Sox that he missed, caused him to miss like 10 days. Okay, well, who knows? Everyone says that until they have a setback, as we just talked about. Bottom line is Jake Berger is going on the injured list. 
Uh, at least it's Monday. And hopefully, well, like maybe it's not that at least it's Monday. I'm stunned by the amount of leagues that have open waivers or that run them every night. So if you've got Berger and he's injured, you can go to the waiver wire right now, I guess, in 75% of leagues where there's open waivers, which is crazy to crazy to me. That's how everyone seems to play. We've gone in reverse. We moved away from the open waiver wire system right back to it. Okay. Uh, I was going to say the good news is it's Monday. And if your league, at least even if you run fab, if your league allows you to pick players up until first pitch on Monday, let's hope. Let me check. Actually, now that I said, let's hope that the game on Monday uh, with the Guardians and the Red Sox doesn't harm you, uh, your ability to do that. Let me check. Uh, over on RT Sports, I've got multiple leagues that have the availability of adding players uh, once fab is run until that first pitch. Uh, so that you can add players and such. Let me see. Add player. Let's see if it happens. No, see? No, you don't. So this is it. This is thanks, Red Sox and Guardians. I'm in many leagues where, again, the waivers run on Sunday night, and then until first pitch on Monday, the waiver wire is open. So anyone that didn't get added off the waiver wire through the fab process can be added on Monday, late injury, that kind of thing. Because this stupid game is early, it's locked. So maybe it wasn't good news that it happened on Monday. We needed this information an hour ago on Jake Berger. Oh, uh, and, um, you know, John Birdie's been traded. He's hurt too, but he was traded. So a uh, little bit of scrambling going to be going on now for the Marlins as they try to piece this thing together. Obviously, Berger, one of the better power bats in their lineup, had 34 home runs last year. Um, they'll, try to, they'll try to piece this together. Maybe Emmanuel Rivera gets some run at third here in the short term. We'll see. Uh, speaking of veteran players with back issues, J.D. Martinez, uh, the update on J.D. Martinez is, you know, he's going to resume swinging the bat today. He had the back issue. He had a shot. Um, starting to make some progress here. Having a shot in your back is not fun. I've had lumbar and all this kind of It's not fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of things done for, for a guy that didn't really kill himself in sports. Um, anyway, J.D. Martinez, uh, the hope is that, you know, he's good to go. Swinging the bat today. This is obviously a setback, though. So is he going to be available for action for the Mets in April? It might be May. So this is really starting to stretch out, and we're seeing this. We're going to talk about Blake Snell in a second. We're seeing when you report late, it's not exactly ideal. The Mets really could use J.D. Martinez, obviously, that power bat in the middle of the lineup. Um, they're not going to have it for a little bit of time, at least. Uh, Keep it Ruiz. He's got an illness. They're not putting him on the injury list. It's not clear exactly what he's dealing with, but he's got an illness. He's missed five games in a row. And the reports are that he's not going to be in the lineup today for the Nationals. And this is really tough because if you're in a two-catcher league, this is killing you. You're not going out to the waiver wire and dropping Kiba Ruiz. You're not going to add a third catcher almost certainly. So you're just taking zeros. And even if you're in a one-catcher league, like, you know, it depends who's on the waiver wire and all that. I'm, I'm a fan of Kiba Ruiz. I, you know, we saw last year a very effective season for him. Very reasonable to expect him to have another season along those lines this year. So I really wouldn't want to drop him if all possible. Um, but it doesn't sound like they're going to put him on the injury list. And this one's just dragging on because you're just taking zeros. It sucks when we don't have clarity there. Uh, Ra uh, Rafael Devers is indeed back in the lineup today. Uh, he's missed the last four games. He is back in the lineup today for the Red Sox. He's batting second. Uh, let's give an update of that game. Stephen Kwan's 0 for 1. Andres Jimenez is 0 for 1. Xavion Curry. Get two outs here to start the game. I just wanted to give a live update on the show. I never thought I'd give a live update to. Um, but there it is. But yeah, Rafael Devers is back, and that's good news. Let's talk about some performance issues. Jackson Holiday. Um, sorry, Phil Backard, if you're watching this. Um, Jackson Holiday has been absolutely, without question, horrible. Period. End of story. Jackson Holiday is still 20 years old. Jackson Holiday is still arguably the best offensive prospect in baseball. What I find fascinating is I had a question. Uh, this weekend about, you know, Holiday, he's not doing it well. I'm thinking about dropping Holiday to pick up Jackson Merrill. And I wanted to just focus on that idea because it's it's it, it comes up every year and it, it's something I fight every year. We need to stop. You need to stop depending upon rookies. Okay? If one rookie doesn't do well, you don't jump to the next rookie. It's not the way to do this. Okay? It's not the way to have success doing this. We don't know. We don't know. No one knows. Okay. Presidents of clubs, GMs of clubs, managers of clubs, front office people in clubs. No one knows how a young player is going to perform when they hit the big leagues. No one knows. And this sport is littered with failure. I write about it every year in the history of the first, in the history of, of rookies. And I did it again this year. 
it's littered with failure from the elite level guys. And then it's the Cody Bradfords of the world that do something. This happens all the time. Okay. Now in the end, it evens out right over the years. Okay. But in the short run, there's massive amounts of uncertainty. So don't jump from one rookie to the next rookie, to the next rookie, to the next rookie. Secondly, and I say this all the time too, you can't judge a guy off 15 at bats. If you're going to move on from Jackson Holiday after 15 at bats, you should have never added Jackson Holiday to your roster. It's simply preposterous that you would judge a player off 15 at bats. I know everyone does it every week. I know I know I know because I get questions all the time about making moves, making moves. Everyone does it every week. Okay. But it's crazy pants to judge a guy off four games. Now, Holiday has been horrible. Like I said, he's got a 60% strikeout rate, which is scary, terrible. Like I always, when, when a guy gets to 30%, I get really nervous. We talk about this, right? He's at 60%. That's atrocious. And there is some concern because how long do the, the Orioles, who have all these weapons, how long do they let him go if he can't even put the ball in play? You know, it's getting out, making outs. Okay. No walks, nine strikeouts, and 15 plate appearances. Yeesh. But he is the number one hitting prospect in baseball. He's got the pedigree. He's got the skills. He's got the, the organizational support. They're hitting him ninth in the lineup. They're not pushing him to bat. They called him up because they think he can hit. He hit. He's hit everywhere he's ever been, including in spring training this year and down on the farm this year. He'll be fine. As I said, all this run up here with him. Remember, we're not talking about a guy who's going to hit 300 with 30 home runs this year. That's not who this is now. Could be in three years. It's not who he is right now. He's 20 years old. No matter how good you are, he's 20 years old. So, you know, I, if you have Holiday on your team, you hold Holiday. Don't get rid of Holiday. Three weeks from now, we'll look at him again. And if it's still, okay. But you're in. If you have Holiday, you are in. Stay in. Because you're going to drop him. And what, what's going to happen as soon as you drop him? He's going to then go 7 for 20. You're in, or you shouldn't have been in to start with. Blake Snell is the next guy. I had someone ask in, in, in uh, you know, Discord, hey, can you talk about Blake Snell? Yeah, I happily talk about Blake Snell because he's on my Giants. Blake Snell's been horrible. And in opposition to Jackson Holiday, who's a 20-year-old and never done this before, Blake Snell's been around forever. And this, again, you know, I didn't like the signing when the Giants made it because they gave Snell the out. And I said at the time, still, the only way that Snell stays with the Giants for two years is if he sucks this year. Okay, He's going to do the one-year $30 million. He's going to bail before taking the second-year $30 million or $31 million, whatever the hell it is. He shows up at camp, and he can only throw 65 pitches. I don't know what these guys do when they're not around. Okay, Blake Snell, let's say he's thinking, I'm going to make 31 starts this year. That's a million dollars a start. You can't get ready to throw the first the first time through the rotation for your new team. You need an extra 10 days. I'd be pissed off. If I was a, I'd be if I was the Giants. I would have put that in his contract. Now nah, you can't do that because then he might push himself to pitch and then end up getting hurt. But you know the point, right? You, you just threw a million dollars we gave you away in the toilet. Then in his first outing, he threw another million dollars in the toilet because he gave up three runs and three innings against the lowly Nationals. Then he threw another million dollars in the toilet facing his former team, allowing seven runs in four innings. This is absolutely atrocious work from Blake Snell. He's allowed 10 runs in seven innings. Now, the problem with Blake Snell is exactly this. And it's always been the problem with Blake Snell. It's shiny and great when you're winning Cy Young Awards. When you're not winning Cy Young Awards, it's a mess. And this is the Blake Snell experience. We even saw this last year. He was great for you know four months. He was unbelievable for four months in terms of his ERA and his whip. Even though he's walking everyone in sight, he just got very fortunate not giving up any base hits. Blake Snell... You know, and Blake's not throwing seven innings and two outings happens because he gets his pitch count up. He walks guys. He strikes guys out. There's just a lot of things going on here. Bottom line is there's nothing you can do if you have Blake Snell on your team. You Got to sit with Blake Snell. Still a good environment to pitch in with the Giants. Good environment to pitch in here at San Francisco in the ballpark. It's all, it's all still there for him. He's got a $200 million contract coming to him if he pitches well this year. So he's highly incentivized, as we just talked about. So everything's the same here. But this is the Blake Snell experience. Ray, do I make a move to add Blake Snell? If you have to pay a full price, eh. If it's 90% of the, your, the perceived value, if it's 75% of the perceived value, yeah, then do it. But remember, and I, I've said this multiple times this spring too, Blake Snell has thrown 180 innings twice, including last year. Those are the only two times he's thrown 130 innings at the big league level. 
That's it. The previous two years before last year, 128 and 128. So control problems, durability problems, and poor performance problems at the moment. Lake Snell experience. Uh, San Francisco's loving that right now. Jose Barrios, on the other hand, my guy Jose Barrios is just good. He's just good. Is he dynamic? No. Is he elite? No. Is he going to win the signing award? You know, he could be in the conversation, but no, he's not going to win the signing award unless he gets this huge victory total. But I'll say this for the guy. He's made four starts for the, the Blue Jays. Kevin Gaussman's all over the place. One timeout is Wasi's down. The next time out, he's getting blasted. He's all over the place. Jose Barrios, four outings, four quality starts. Boom, boom, boom. His ERA is 105. 21 strikeouts in 25 innings is a little low. We obviously expect and we'll see that number rise over the course of the season. But, I mean, he's given up three runs and four starts. All of them quality starts. The last three starts, he's given up one run. Back-to-back shutout efforts in seven and six and two-thirds innings. Now, he faced Seattle and Colorado, which are two easy matchups right now. Neither one of those teams is hitting well at all. But he was on the road against Houston, and he was on the road against Tampa Bay. So, um, just a you know, pointer out of here that, excuse me, as I create words and choke myself to death. Um, he is someone that you look at last season as who he is. 36 ERA, 184 strikeouts, 189 innings. He throws 180 innings every year in opposition to a guy like Blake Snell. Takes the ball, double-digit victories every year. He's 3-0 and right now. Could there be a 17-win season here? Yeah, there really could be. He does have the ability to throw six innings every time out, and a lot of guys just don't do that. So we sleep on Jose Barrios every year. He ends up on my team every year. He probably ends up on a lot of your teams every year because I'm always talking about him too. Um, Seth Lugo. You know, Seth Lugo's pitching today. And he's made three starts for the Royals, and there's not a lot of strikeouts here. There's nothing sexy here with Seth Lugo. But he's made three starts. All the starts are quality starts. If you look back to last season... That's six consecutive starts for Seth Lugo, quality starts. Quality start, six innings, three or fewer runs allowed. Six in a row. Six starts in a row for Seth Lugo where he's done that. Well, Ray, come on, that's a couple outings last year, this year. Okay, yeah. In his last 11 starts, he has 10 quality starts. Yeah, Seth Lugo. And it's not dominant. It's not sexy. It's not. And I'm not suggesting we're getting big strikeout numbers or woohoo time with, with Seth Lugo. But as I wrote about in his player profile this year, and he's and I've seen this because he's still on waiver wires right now. Seth Lugo, you know, especially today, he's facing the White Sox. The White Sox suck. They not only suck, they're without even they're without Mancada, Robert, and um Jimenez, which are their three like veteran hitters. They traded Jake Berger last year. We we're just talking about him. their offense sucks. He's very likely to have another strong outing today, Seth Lugo. So I would suggest if you if Seth Lugo's on your waiver wire, he's a guy to add right now and pitch him today. Because the matchup is one on paper that's really good. Uh, and understand that even though he ain't no sexy guy, you know, he's kind of Jose Barrios Jr. And there are questions about workload because he's been in the bullpen, out of the bullpen the last couple of years. But he's also a guy in his mid-30s. And he's pitching, he's taking the ball 30 times this year for the Royals. Like, they'll, they'll happily give him the ball and let him throw 172 innings this year. They're not going to stop his innings pitched. Because he's there to stabilize the rotation. That's why they brought him in. Michael Waka, they brought him in to do the same thing, but they know Waka's going to throw 130 innings. They'd love for, for Seth Lugo to throw 170. So just keep that in mind. Um, strong, strong effort to date and likely to have another one today. Jerks and Profar, talk about a strong effort to date. And Jerks and Profar has done this before. How many? Raise your hand if you've had him on your team. Yeah, your hand's up like mine. Yeah, you've had him on your team, I know. I know the experience. Because um, <laughs> we've all picked him up at times because someone's gotten hurt. We needed a boost because he qualified at multiple spots back in the day. Because he had a nice week or two. Well, he's had a nice three weeks right now for the Padres. The signing when it happened late was like, who cares? Well, 18 games in, he's batting 300 with a 400 on base percentage, a 500 slugging percentage, and a 0.8 walk to strikeout ratio. This is all really good work. And if you look at the the stat cast data, you know, I mean, the barrel rate is what it is. It's 5%, which is not good, but it's above his career to mark. Okay. The exit velocity is a career best, and it's a career best by a lot. It's 92.6 miles an hour. His career mark is 87. It's five miles an hour above his career level. Part of the reason for that is he's hit the ball in a lower 
launch angle, 11% launch angle versus his 13% career mark. So he's lowered the ball a little bit. His hard hit rate's 50%, which also would be a career best. This guy's never had a mark of 35% before. So he's hitting the ball really well. Now he is jerks and pro far. We've got a long track record of him being jerks and pro far. He's 31 years old. Can a guy make a change? Yeah, sure. We see it all the time. Am I expecting his stat cast data to put him as one of the top 20 sluggers in baseball? No, no, of course not. But there could be a little bit more staying power than we're talking about. And we'll talk about him in a second when we get to the fab bidding because he was picked up in a majority of my leagues. He's probably available in your leagues because he was available in my leagues. And most of my leagues are you know, 14, 15 teamers. Your leagues are usually smaller than that. We may have something with, with him. And when I say we may have something with him, my expectations, if it were to go right. And he has a good season. He hits 255 with 19 home runs. And he drives in 69 and scores 71. You know, I mean, it's like, it's a good no. Um, He doesn't run much anymore. He's only got six steals the last two years. So he's really a fill-in fist starter. I think that still is who he is. That's who he's been. That's who he still is. But he's in a nice groove and he's hitting the ball hard enough that instead of looking at him for a two-week fill-in, we get him for a six-week run here. A really solid start for Jerks and Pofar. Uh, the next name on the list, Paul Goldschmidt. Someone asked me about Paul Goldschmidt over the weekend. What do I do? And the answer is just like I do because I have him in some leagues myself. There's nothing you can do. You can't trade Paul Goldschmidt. You're not going to get anything for him. Uh, you just hold him. The Cardinals offense hasn't got going from top to bottom virtually. They've dealt with injuries. Uh, Jordan Walker hasn't hit. Tommy Edmond hasn't been around. Scott hasn't hit. Carlson hasn't been around. Like It's been a mess. And part of the reason for the offense being a mess is Paul Goldschmidt has not hit. And, you know, someone pointed out to me, well, he started slowly last year too. Yeah, but, you know, remember when we're talking small sample sizes of 20 games here and there, it's a lot of it's white noise, okay? What I see with Goldschmidt, and I think it's concerning to people, is he's 36, and people start getting really nervous because he wasn't good in spring. He still went 25-80-80 last year and sold, you know, 11 bases. Like, he's still going to be that guy. I really do believe he's still that guy. The good news is, and I pointed this out in Discord at fantasyguru.com, um, the good news is that he is going to play every day, period. Going to play every day. That's just how it's going to be. Okay. So even if he struggles, he's not coming out of the lineup. So you have that because a lot of the guys struggle and they get demoted or they get, you know, not happening to Paul Goldschmidt. What's wrong with Paul Goldschmidt? He talked about the offseason and basically about, I saw a video of him talking about not having his lower half and his top half synchronized as well as they could be last year. And so he was really diligently working on his bottom half to get it more engaged in in, in sequence with his upper half. It's not working so far at all. And the strikeout rate is up. The walk rate's down a little bit. He's not hitting the ball as hard as he used to at all. He's gone reverse um, jerks and profar, like almost exactly in the reverse of jerks and profar. I'd still bet on Paul Goldschmidt over jerks and profar, as I think you should. But the fact is that Goldschmidt is a mess right now. Like I said, with Profar, we know who Goldschmidt is. We've got a, a, a borderline Hall of Fame caliber bat. I'm not saying he's going to make the Hall of Fame, but for that 10-year period of time when he was rocking and rolling, I mean, from you know, 19, 2020, 2012 to 2021, those are some banging numbers, right? We've got the durability factor as well. He's played 150 games as a full-time player every year since 2014. So he always plays. He will figure it out. Would I expect him to be better than last year? No. I still think that, you know, 265, 25, 80, 80. But that's still usable, especially if he's stealing 10 bases. He hasn't run yet. He hasn't got a base yet. Um, but I think we just got to give him more time before we get overly panicked with him. Finally, Tommy Pham. It's not official yet, but Tommy Pham is looking like he's going to sign with the White Sox. Why does this matter? I just talked about the White Sox. They suck. Okay. They're going to sign Tommy Pham. The reports also suggest that Pham might only need a handful of games down the farm before he you know, will be promoted to the White Sox club. He's going to get signed. He's going to go right in that lineup. And Tommy Pham still has power. He still can run. I added him in a league we'll talk about in a second. A 15-teamer, I think it was. Maybe it was 14. We'll figure. I forget. They all run together. Um, but if he's available on the waiver wire, and he probably is in 98% of your leagues, that's a guy that has – 20 home run power. That's a guy that has 15 steel potential. And he is someone that the White Sox, if they do indeed sign him, have absolutely zero reason not to play him. Because what they'll want to do is they'll sign him. They'll want him to have a smoke in two months and then they'll want to trade him. 
that's that'll be the plan. And then once we get to that point with Fan, it'll depend where he gets traded to. And we've played this game with him multiple times, right? Like, does he become a full time player or not? But look, I mean, last year he had 480 plate appearances, saw 16 home runs, stole 22 bases. Like, you know, his strikeout rate last year was a four year low. His exit velocity last year was a three year high and it was 92 miles an hour with a 49% hard hit rate. He still hits the ball well. So, Tommy Pham, right now today, free on waiver wires. Consider adding him because once he signs with the White Sox, when we get to Fab and all that kind of stuff, price is going to go up. Again, remember, use that promo code FSD20 at fantasyguru.com to sign up with the products. Uh, we also have the, the uh, MLB seasonal pass for DFS and wagering that is available. If you get the DFS baseball, if you get the wagering baseball, you also get the all-in package for free, which is all the other sports other than football. Get that all for free if you buy the DFS baseball or the wagering baseball package right now. Let's talk a little bit about waiver wire and let's go to the screen for that uh this is so i see right at the top this is tout wars my 12 team league it's the only 12 team league i'm in thousand dollar fab in that league that is the experimental league so it's different on base percentage replaces batting average innings pitch replaces wins and sold replaces saves so three differences there mr budo of the um Mets had a strong outing over the weekend. We'll see if he sticks in the rotation. Very likely he could. Uh, he went for $54 though out of 1000 No one got overly excited there because of the concerns about is he going to stick in the lineup and performance. Uh, but he was one of the top pitchers in terms of expenditures this week. Uh, Gavin Sheets went for $77. We talked about Gavin Sheets on here. Gavin Sheets has been terrific. Now, he's Gavin Sheets. There's a lot of holes in his game, and he's a platoon guy. Um, like in Tout Wars, and I'll say it this way. In Tout Wars, I drafted like in the last round Jock Peterson. Is there a tremendous amount of difference between Peterson and Sheets? Yeah, I like Peterson more because of the on-base percentage piece, right? Are they similar-ish? Yeah. Again, I drafted Peterson, so I'm not going to sweat someone for adding Sheets. Do I have expectations for Sheets continuing this strong start? Not really. But he's got the opportunity to play, even though it'll be in a platoon fashion. Joe Ross went for $11. Just pointed out he's had a couple of decent outings for the Brewers. He's in the rotation for now. He's available everywhere. At one point in time, before his arm went kaplooey, uh, he was one of the rising prospects in the game. Never been able to reclaim that. Uh, I think this week is a big test for him because last time out he looked pretty good. This week is a big test for him. He went for 11 out of 1,000 in this one. Jesse Winker, who I added in the another league, went for $79. Jesse Winker hasn't hit in like two years. I don't know if anyone – has anyone looked at Jesse Winker lately? Let's pull it up just so I have the numbers exactly right here with Jesse Winker. Jesse Winker has kind of come out of nowhere to all of a sudden be hitting, oh, 341 with a 482 on base percentage and a 500 slugging percentage. He's got a one to one, one to one, one zero, one to one strikeout to walk ratio. He's got a 982 OPS and Yahtzee. Now, the thing with Winker is he's with the Nationals. They, they're they going to play him until Wood is ready, until Cruz is ready, until they can trade him. He's going to be platooned. He's not going to face lefties. But before you say well, this hot start is ridiculous, I mean, in 2020, his OPS was 932. In 2021, his OPS was 949. This year, it's 982. It's not staying at 982. Could it stay at 882 this year? It could. Now, the problem is, is like I said, the last two years, basically health woes have limited him to a 660 OPS, which is horrid. It's worse than the league average. But the dude knows how to swing if he can stay healthy. I love this price point, $79 out of $1,000, especially in an on-base percentage league. Um, great move there. Uh, I think that Winker, again, short-term, against right-handed pitching, swinging well, concerns about his health. Dalton Varsha went for 117 Ray, how's Dalton Varsha on the way for? Because it's an on-base percentage league, and he's not good at that because he hasn't hit. And someone went out and spent 12% of the budget to take a chance on his slow start. Uh, turning around and heating up. We get questions about this a lot, and just I wanted to point this out. Camilo Duvall went for $57. Now, this is a Souls League again. He only went for $57. A lot of times, people, even in the Souls Leagues, you know, I had someone talk to me about Admiral Uribe over the weekend. Um, in it, Just because you're a closer in a Souls League, you know, would I rather have Duvall than Giovanni Gallegos? Yeah, of course I would. You know, do I want to spend $57 on my $1,000 to do it? Yeah, okay. You know, but you know what I mean? It's like, Gallegos is going to get nine saves and get 23 holds. And it's like, is that appreciably different than the 35 saves of Duvall? So players are totally different. If that was Duvall and someone had 
rage dropped them or mistakenly dropped them in a saves league, that $57 probably becomes $257, right? It'd be a massive $357. It'd be a massive difference there. So there's a look at Tell Wars. Let's look at my 15 team labor league. Um, that's a that's only a hundred dollars. So the bidding is a tenth here. Um Yariel Rodriguez of the uh, Blue Jays. And this is something, if you're in a league that's this deep or like an NLA only league, you understand this. If you're in a 10 or 12 team league, if you're in a head-to-head league and people are changing their pitching stack, you don't understand how difficult it is to look at the wave war and get excited about anybody. Rodriguez uh, being available in a 15 team league, great target. Uh, you can see failed bids there for one, two, 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 and four dollars. I was the four dollar bid. Okay. I didn't go to the six that it was required to get Rodriguez. I did get Rodriguez in another league we'll talk about in a second. But Rodriguez got a live arm. It's unclear exactly how the Blue Jays are going to utilize him. Uh, is, is he going to stick in the rotation long term? Are they going to p- piggyback start him? Are they going to put him in the bullpen? He's got a live arm. He didn't pitch last year because of you know just life things he was going through getting here into the States. Bowden Francis has not pitched well at all. Um, hasn't lived up to expectations. So Rodriguez is an ascending player. And I love the get, I love this price point. I threw $4 out. He went for six. Um, Kirby Yates went for five. And it's not just that Kirby Yates went for five. By the way, Jose Leclerc has been demoted from the closing role. He's going to work low leverage situations because of his struggles. Yates and David Robertson, the, the prime guys for the ninth inning right now with the Rangers, that could obviously change, but that's where we're at right now. And again, this league, uh, labor is, is a traditional five by five league. So it has saves. So Yates went for $5, but look at the failed bids. Four, three, four, five, 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 two, four, two, three. So if they have the same amount of bid, uh, it goes to the team in the lower ranking in terms of the overall standings, right? So that's why the same bids can result in someone getting. But look at that. Like half the league, over half the league bid on this guy. And none of the bids were more than 5%, right? So everyone was very muted, but everyone took a shot. And everyone was in that same 2 to $5 range. That suit, So... That's where people are looking right now. I had a question this morning about someone dropping Kirby 8. Don't drop Kirby 8s at this point. It's hard to envision a scenario where Kirby 8s all of a sudden comes becomes a 25 save guy. Could happen. Okay. And even if it's a 12 save guy, you know, he's a very solid pitcher, even with his advancing age. He's a very solid pitcher. And I, at this point in time, certainly can't rule out him getting to double digit saves. And the room thought the same way. Jesse Winker went to me in this league. Hello, Ray Flowers, for $4. Uh, four, which again is four percent of the hundred. That's roughly forty in a thousand, of course. It's a little bit less. I was a little more fortunate than the cost in the previous league. Uh, Jerks and Profar, we talked about one for two dollars with four failed bids of one and two dollars for him. Moving on to FSGA, and this is a league where we got something to talk about here. Um, you'll see there the second yellow on the screen. Jesse Winker awarded a Series X on Flowers for sixty nine dollars. So that's two leagues that I added Winker. Um, and again, I, I went through Winker. There is blow-up potential in my face here. He could get hurt tomorrow. He could hit 210 the next two weeks. Okay. But I've always, anyone that's been with me, if, if you have for a while, you'll know this. And thank you for, for being with me for a while. Uh, I am a Jesse Winker mark. I've always been a Jesse Winker mark. Um, ha- had him forever, talked about him forever, all my teams, all this kind of stuff. He is in a point right now where he's incredibly hot. Let's add Jesse Winker and see what we got. $69 in this league. Uh, what was the, the previous one? I had $4. So 7% of the budget, 4% of the budget, 8% of the budget. So all three leagues very similar with Jesse Winker. Now here's the kicker with FSGA here at the top with Colton Kowser. $521? Wow. Um, am I going to say that I would prefer Kowser to Winker? Yes, I would say that. I will also say that if you look at the failed bids for Colton Kowser, I put the same $69 bid in for Kowser as I put in for Winker. I was the one that had that, that bid that failed there for $69. Kowser goes for $521. Well, Ray, kowser has been phenomenal. Absolutely. Well, Ray, what did the rest of the room do? Okay, well, here's the rest of the room with their bids. Again, 60, 66, someone went. I was 69. 247, 237. 170, 102, 25, 179, 367, 457, 170. Ooh, now, again, 14 team mixed league, an emerging talent, someone that we've talked about before. I've said this and I will stand by it, especially early in his career. I think Kowser's a 250, 25 to 30 home run guy. Okay. 
That is a high price to pay, to say the least, for a 250, 25, 80 guy. Obviously, a massive overpay given the room. It was a 52% bid that won him. The next highest bid was 37%. Let me ask you a question. Maybe it's an obvious one that I'm stupid here. I don't know. Until you tell me. Do you rather spend 52% of your budget on Colton Cowser or 7% on Jesse Winker? When you're spending half your budget on a player, you have to be right. You have to be right. Because that takes you out of all the other guys that are going to come up the rest of the way. You also have to understand who a player is. And in my opinion, Colton Cowser is not the guy to spend $521 on. Because he's not going to steal bases. And I don't think his batting average is going to be a plus. So, you know, and again, no one else in this room went over 37%. There were people at 26%, 25%, 24%. So it really felt like the room was kind of comfortable with, you know, a quarter of the budget. He went for half the budget. Again, I like I said, I would have rather had Jesse Winker. I put the exact same bid on the two guys. Um, there we go. Colton Cowser better, better do it all season long. He better hit 290 with 30 home runs and drive in 95 with that price point. Yariel Rodriguez, Yariel Rodriguez, I can't talk, went to me. Hello, Ray. For 68, again, out of this, 68 out of 1,000, 7%. Um, a little bit more. I had more of a need in this league than I did in the previous league where I went 4% of my budget. This league, I went at 7% of my budget. Um, the failed bids for him, there were a couple of them at 45. So I overpaid two. Now I overpaid $20 versus... 150 bucks, right? A big difference. But I wanted to get this guy. And when you're in a league that you've got injured pitchers and you're in a league where the owners are astute, like I look at the I look at the like the wave wire article at fantasyguru.com and all those guys were drafted. Like all every player that's basically been on that list was drafted in my leagues. So a guy like Aaron Rodriguez, despite the concerns about his role and everything, that arm and the opportunity, you know, you're in on. And uh I'm I'm more than willing to take a shot on a guy like that than a Kyle Hendricks or Wade Miley. Like, I'll take a shot on those guys too, but those guys, it's, you know, here's $14. Let's see if I get the guy. Get a little more aggressive, but not over the top with Yari Rodriguez because we just don't know what his role is at this point in time. Another player I grabbed was Tommy Pham for $49. I think that, I don't think anyone else went over like 11 bucks, maybe was the last one or something like that. I cut it off, sorry, to fit everyone's name on here so you could all see it. But I, I drastically overpaid based upon what the room did. Again, I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that because I think that, you know, $49 for Tommy Pham to hit 16 home runs and steal 17 bases this year, I'm, I'm down with that for that price point. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a need that I had. As you can see here, I needed help in the outfield. I added two outfielders, right? So it's a need I had. Chris Bryant not getting it done. Okay, so we got to bring in some guys just in case Chris Bryant continues to not get it done. So let's give some depth there in the outfield, which is what I talk to all of you about all the time. It's not just... Is player A better than player B? It's like, where is my weakness? Well, my weakness is in the outfield. Let's add some outfielders. Let's address that weakness. Um, that's what I was able to do there. So that's kind of a run through. And again, for those of you listening on podcast or over at fantasyguru.com on the Elite Plus tab, uh, understand that over on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Elite Plus Network, that we have the ability to show visually what we're talking about. So this whole discussion we're having through FAB, I've had pictures up with the fab top values and there's way more players than we discussed because i just don't have time ben brown paul blackburn jeff hoffman martin perez like all these guys are listed on the sheet there so you can always watch the show live youtube.com slash at elite plus network you can always go there after the fact and see the, the the pictures and everything like that or you can just listen to the show i mean again i think we hit some of the highlights here hopefully we hit some of the highlights here um, a couple of ways for you all to uh, get after it as they as they say Again, use the promo code FSD20 to sign up at fantasyguru.com. Buy any of the baseball products, and by that I mean the DFS baseball product or the wagering baseball product, and you get the all-in package for free, which means you get DFS and wagering for NBA, NHL, PGA, MMA, and soccer. We're giving you all those sports for free on top of the baseball package. So right now, great deal. Get involved. Even if you're not heavily involved, like Ray, I don't give a flip about soccer. Maybe you do the NBA and Justin Fensterman can help you out there. Remember, it's CFS and wagering. Maybe it's NHL and Jorge Pucks can help you out there. So you're getting it all for free. You're going to get the package for baseball anyway. Getting that other stuff for free, pretty nice add-on there, at least in my opinion. 
Let's go to the room and see if we got anything here. Ah, here we go. Steve Davis. Steve has to say, regarding fingerprints on glasses, I no longer wear glasses, but it bothers me when I see it on other people's glasses. Does that count? Yeah, I don't understand. Like, if it's in the corner, like I just bumped my finger earlier. Ah, oh, okay, it's in the corner. But it doesn't it always seem to be right in the middle? And my lady friend, by the way, she gets, she's a scientist and a doctor. So, you know, kind of that traditional, really smart person. Um, gets fingerprints on the glasses. Doesn't seem to care. I, I, it drives me bananas. So yeah, Steve, if you see it on someone else's glasses and it bothers you, yeah, I will consider you in the same group as me. Uh, David Prieto said, I am glad I made a move and picked up Michael Bush, who had a nice weekend. Michael Bush has been terrific. Uh, and there is a plan to talk about Michael Bush on the SiriusXM show today. Uh, that show is from 2 to 3 Eastern. It's Fantasy Dugout. I'm sitting in for Steve Phillips today, so I'll be on there. Uh, from 2 to 3 Eastern time on SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio, Michael Bush is definitely one of the players we're going to talk about. Fourth straight game with the home run. He is looking great right now. And he's uh, he he was drafted in my leagues because, again, deeper leagues. He probably wasn't drafted in your leagues, meaning he was picked up off the waiver wire. He's got a shot to be one of the waiver wire guys of the year, right? He's really started out strongly. We'll talk about him more on the show on Sirius XM. Um, let's see. Mario says, dropping puck. By the way, AJ Puck is not starting today. He's got the flu. Eduardo, Edward Cabrera is coming back. He'll take the spot in the rotation. No, no, what that means long term, but that's the move for today. Um, available, need souls available. And there's a whole list of players here. Um, there are numerous with three souls. Remember, Mario, that it's there's souls rankings at fantasyguru.com from the preseason. So I would reference that. Secondly, when you say, well, there's a lot of guys with three holds or, th or three souls. It's not just about what the guy has done here in 14 games, right? So make sure you're looking at the pecking order in the bullpens. Make sure you're taking into consideration what these guys did last year, especially if they were with the same team and the same manager. Factor that in. Um, if I had to look at some names here that are on your list and, and say, which guy do I grab? Uh, we have M Matan, Romero, Ursig, Bender, Stewart, Slayton, Barlow, Shelby Miller. I'd probably go Shelby Miller, the last guy listed there. Uh, Alex Lang has been a real disappointment with the Tigers, and it's looking like he's he's not even falling to the setup role. He's even behind Shelby Miller now. Miller's got uh, good stuff. He's always had good stuff. The issue with him is staying healthy. Um, so Matan is interesting because he's always involved. He hasn't pitched very well, but he's racking up the souls right now. I'm going to say Shelby Miller at this moment in time. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out, Mario. Okay, so remember, coming up at 2 to 3 Eastern today, I'm on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio on Fantasy Dugout. Later today, I'm on Elite Sports Game Time from 8 to 10 Eastern with Justin Fensterman. We'll update all the live action, big slate of baseball games tonight. So we'll talk about that live tonight on the show from 8 to 10 Eastern. Uh, this show, Fantasy Sports Daily, is Monday through Friday from 11 o'clock Eastern in the morning to whenever we finish. Usually it's about you know 50 minutes to an hour. Uh, I'll have the DFS cash game breakdown available over at fantasyguru.com here uh, later today. That'll go up after the show. Uh, don't forget to keep sending those questions, comments, thoughts to discord at fantasyguru.com. Help you set your lineups, make the wave wire moves, all of that. We still have the full season product available too. If you want to get involved because you like what you're seeing here, you want to engage with the community, you want to ask questions about waiver wire and trades and all that. Sign up for the package over at fantasyguru.com. Use that promo code FSD20. It'll still work. Get you a discount on the seasonal package, and that'll cover you all season long uh, if you want to join us there. So thanks for listening today. I got a busy day. I got to get to it. Got to get some typing doing. Got to get some tea for the old uh, lozenges, lozenges for the throat, something like that, so I can keep talking for the rest of the day. Uh, we're going to have a good one here on Monday. Go enjoy the baseball game now that this show is done. Catch up with me at 2 o'clock Eastern on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Pay your taxes. And I'll see you again tomorrow here on Fantasy Sports Daily, powered by FantasyGuru.com.